Church. I hope you are doing well. So good to have you with us today um, as part of our daily devotions. Uh, my name is Rebecca. It's lovely to virtually meet you. <laughs> um, but today I'm going to continue our focus uh, on faith. That's what we've been speaking about in this past term with our daily devotions. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive straight in. Um, I'm actually going to share an account from Kings 2. Um, but just before we do that, I just wanted to do a bit of research on what the word faith means really. Um, I'm a researcher, I'm a person who likes to know the detail, um, so I thought definitely that was a good place to start. Um, so where did you go when you need to do some research? You go straight to Google. Um, so I started off with a quick Google search on what does faith mean, where does it come from, um, you know, where does the, the word originate from, all that sort of stuff. Um, and there was this one statement that really struck out to me, so I'm just going to read it for you. Um, faith means belief, firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction, faithfulness. Faith is confidence in we what we hope for and assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it. Faith knows that no matter what the situation in our lives or someone else's, that the Lord is working in it. I just love the sentence in that that said, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it. And we can really see this in work in the account from about the widow and prophet Elisha in 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. So I'll just read that for you now. I'm reading from the NLT. It says, one day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asks. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbours. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from the flask into the jars, setting each one aside when, it, and when, each one aside when it's filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon, every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said, one of her sons to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he said. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left. This account explains that we have a widow who's struggling to make ends meet. She can't, you know, do the food shop, whether or that. She's at the point of where her sons might be taken from her to pay for some of her debts. So she heads to the prophet for some clear direction, um, you know, on what she should do next. And the prophet gives her a really clear word of exactly what to do. A step-by-step account of go do this and this and this and this. So she does it. She has faith that what the prophet has said is, is true and correct and what God has you know shared so off she goes she goes she does it she she ticks off each task that's been asked of her and great the miracle happens the oil is overflowing she's able to sell it pay off her debts and we could just leave it there awesome miracle she had faith it happened they paid off their debts and they lived on the oil that was left but i just want to pull out what it says in verse six soon every container was full to the brim Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. The question I have after reading this is, did this oil stop flowing because the miracle was finished? Or did the oil stop flowing because she stopped providing jars? If the widow could have found more jars, would the oil have continued to flow? Church, this is something that I want to just encourage you with off the back of that is that is there something you're preparing for in faith and you believe something will happen maybe it's faith the relationship will be restored faith for a new job faith and finance breakthrough whatever it is and just like the widow right now you are going about you are collecting your jars you've put in things in order of, of the word that you got from God and, and faith and, and belief that it will happen but right now I just encourage you Continue to collect the jars. 
at a point where you think that faith's, you know, you've hit the end of your faith, or maybe you think you've seen the miracle happen already, keep collecting those jars. Whatever you think God can do, lift your faith and, and double it, triple it, and just be aware that he has got so much in store for us. And just like the widow, we can collect and do our bit, but what if we'd just gone that little step further? If we'd done that little bit extra, would the miracle have stopped before then? Or would we actually have seen more of a miracle? Just like it says in that definition about faith. Um, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working. So what we think in our human nature that the Lord is doing, it, that's never what the Lord will stop at. We know he has got immeasurably more for us. And I really encourage you that in that moment, you just keep collecting your jars. Church, it's been lovely to be with you today and share that for you. Hope you have a great day and see you soon. Bye.